Welcome back to Newswire. Another night of NFL preseason games, one that we'll focus on here in just a few minutes. Dolphins and Falcons will be played at Hard Rock Stadium. Adam Beasley is covering the Dolphins for Pro Football Network, also covering the National Football League. I feel like, Adam, it has been – I'm going to take a shot at this. I'm going to take a shot. I feel like you have covered in some way South Florida and the Dolphins, I'm going to say, for 12 years. Is that is that too – Is that am I underselling you on that? Is that right? Yeah, that's uh, – close without going over, you'd be good and the price is right. Uh, I've been here since 06, so 18 years now. That's – I did some years. news work with the Miami Herald for a while, but I have definitely been working media in this market for way too long. Yeah, 18 years. I said 12. I Look, I undersold the guy there, but I've known Adam for a long time, too, at least 10. Uh, okay, so uh, Dolphins going into the season, they've made a lot of different headlines, and there's some more even going on right now with injuries. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's start off with the players who left in the offseason. And, and, you know, honestly, it's it's, you know, some players I think could potentially have an impact, and some... I think we're more ado about just getting replacements for them, including Shaq Barrett, who we didn't show here, never ended up playing at all for them. Uh, but Van Ginkle went to the Vikings. Wilkins was the big one who signed that contract with the Raiders. Uh, Xavier Howard was fantastic for many years. He left through free agency. And then the Dolphins pivoted by signing Barrett, uh, who is, it says that he's in addition here, but he retired already, Frank. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr., Jonathan Harris, I mean, these are not a ton of names that people know, uh, except for like Calais Campbell, maybe, and a couple of other players. Did they do enough on defense, Adam, to keep up with how good their offense is going to be? Yeah, they, they never were going to be able to replace one for one Christian Wilkins. He's just too dynamic and versatile of a player. Uh, he meant too much to their defense for any one guy to replace. I, I definitely think the Campbell addition has helped, but they're, what they're trying to do is replace him in the aggregate, uh, have enough different parts that kind of, makes up for what he brought uh they're gonna have a lot more of a rotation i mean they're they're offensive tackles and sealers back this year zach sealer but he and wilkins played an obscene amount of snaps last year and i would assume that was that would come down for sealer certainly uh they're gonna need to fill all those snaps for for wilkins i think you're gonna see probably they're gonna play it's gonna be an odd man front so i count defensive ends and nose tackles all in the same batch and each of those three positions the three end positions the nose tackle I think they're going to have probably seven maybe guys play in that rotation, at the very least six, uh, and just keep throwing bodies in there. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. As you mentioned, the aggregate, we've you know, heard that term on Moneyball before, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But the aggregate also was accomplished in the draft where the Dolphins very clearly early on had the idea of, hey, we are going to have to get an edge rusher. That is the key in the NFL getting to the quarterback. So they drafted Chop Robinson. And naturally, there's going to be some other bit players that they will fit in, uh, you know, Jalen Wright being one of those. But let's focus here on Robinson. Uh, you know, I'm following along here as training camp is going. I got to tell you, I haven't seen his name mentioned all that much. So maybe I'm just not uh, reading the right material or seeing the right things here. How has he looked so far? I guess the Elon uh, algorithm has jacked up for you because we've been writing about Chop Robinson a ton. Uh, he's had, uh, <laughs> I, I would it. say he's, He's definitely had the most impactful uh, training camp of all the rookies, I think, bar none. Uh, he's been uh, pretty active in the backfield. He's not going to be the big edge setter. I think that's why they went out inside Campbell and brought back Emmanuel Agua after Barrett retired, to your point. Uh, but if you're looking for a guy who can give you 30, 35 solid pass rush reps a game, uh, Chop Robinson more than fits that bill. I mean, they're, they're going to need him, particularly early on, because – uh, uh, both Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb are both coming off of reconstructive mm -hmm. surgeries. We don't know the timelines for either. Uh, if I were a betting man, I would say Phillips is a much better chance of being ready for the opener than Chubb. Uh, he got hurt uh, a month before, and he just seems to have really taken to his rehab well. Uh, but even still, even if you're able to get both Chubb and Phillips back for week one, they're not going to be playing the number of snaps early on, at least. You're going to need to have another strong pass rusher. And Chop's been really good. Now, certainly it helps that he's gone against Patrick Paul a lot uh, in practice. Uh, I don't think Paul's going to be in their plans to play even as the number three or even four tackle early on. I think this is going to be a pretty true redshirt year for him. Uh, and we've seen why. But I, I think of that matchup, you've got to be the most encouraged, obviously, of Chop because he's been, he's been beating the, a second-round pick pretty regularly in practice. All right, so now, now before we get to the, the season outlook, let's talk about tonight. Uh, Dolphins play the Falcons. 
Uh, based on the reports that I've seen, the receivers room has been decimated, at least to start with. They brought in a lot of receivers from outside the room, and I've watched those press conferences uh, with the head coach. And I got to tell you, they're uh, they're very strange, to say the least. I don't know what to make of them. Uh, who, who do we expect to see play tonight on the side of the Dolphins? Anybody of interest? You're going to see meaningful snaps from the likes of Willie Sneed, Malik Washington. Uh, I don't even know if they're going to play River Craycraft tonight because usually the first uh, preseason game is truly a backups game for the Dolphins. If there's a, you know some of these position battles like interior uh, defensive line safety where they need to have clarity as early as possible, those guys will play. But if you know you're on the team and you have a pretty good idea of what your role is, you're not going to see the field much tonight. So. Uh, yeah, they they need what they need. What they haven't had yet. What they need at some point soon is to have Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, and Odell Beckham Jr. all on the field at the same time because right. they have to have at least some kind of sense what that trio is going to look like. I know they have a vision for all three of those guys. Uh, they, you know, the Dolphins kind of stagnated last year because teams knew on third down just to double Tyreek, double Jalen, and, and there's no no other answer. That's all they can do. Right. Beckham is brought into break that log jam and to really open things up. And they've got John o. Smith as well, who they hope can really take advantage of some one-on-one. So all those names I just told you, I'm, unfortunately, you're probably not going to see them tonight. It's just how McDaniel runs his preseason. Yep. And that's the way it's gone for years past too. Their season win total, Adam, is nine and a half with a little juice toward the over here. I feel like this is a really good number. Uh, early on in the season, we would have thought Miami would have flown over this number last year and they kind of landed right around it. What do you anticipate this year? Yeah, I think the the division winner is going to have 10 wins. It had 11 last year. I think it's even tighter. I think 10 and 7 absolutely could get it done. And I think that 9.5 suggests they're going to be in the hunt. They're going to be close to that. It all depends on, to your point, how they handle that late season you know, juggernaut they've got of teams. The last six opponents are all going to be in the playoff hunt. Dolphins need to start fast or they're going to have a real tough December and January. Yeah, it looks like the toughest schedule in the NFL the last couple of months. Adam, great to catch up with you. Thanks again for coming on Newswire. I really appreciate it. Anytime, Greg.